two. Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. You've been missing us. We've been Hello. missing you slightly. <laughs> I've been missing you a lot. We love yous. Hey, by the way, I watched the Cusack episode. That was so good. I, I'm a fan. He's a stand-up guy, isn't he? Really Dude, good. He is such a... I was saying it to his face as well, but he is like one of the most chilled-out celebrities I've ever met in my life. And we're good interviewers. Are we, we? I thought we were really good. <laughs> That's good to do. We didn't, we didn't, <laughs> Miss Lesser get carried away. <laughs> I thought we were good. We didn't like clamor over... Like We didn't all talk at the same time. Gave each other space. If only we could do the same thing to ourselves. Doesn't seem to happen. Yeah, it doesn't seem to happen. Person. But we're going to be coming back with some more guests soon. Um, Very soon, maybe. Guests. But you'll Huge hear about guests. that. You'll hear about that uh, in due course. Let's start with the first pod, boys. If you <laughs> first have segment, you, have you? Sorry, ha, first segment. <laughs> have yeah. you checked out the uh, bon, the Bonza debacle? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know there's an airline called <laughs> Bonza? No, sounds pretty good. Okay, so here's the thing. So there was an airline uh, right after COVID that decided that their niche is going to be people traveling to regional areas because the oh, main airlines the ma- <laughs> main airlines don't have enough traffic over there and they're going to fill in that market. Right. So they come in. Forgot that Rex existed. <laughs> Very good. Forgot that there's research. a reason why big airlines don't do regional ones yeah. because the traffic is uh, not worth it. So they, <laughs> so they went bankrupt today. So this is what happens. It's a normal working day for everyone. Mm-hmm. People show up to work. Passengers come to board their flights, and while they're at the airport, they re- find out that Bonza doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> what? So everyone so it's a scam. It's like ticket to go go. It's like someone's making fake tickets. Well, they were making real tickets at the time when they made the tickets, but when it came into Completely using those tickets, unaware that it was about to collapse in on the itself. whole thing was about to collapse. So they went to what is that? A voluntary De- uh, administration. Voluntary administration. And uh, there now the question is, some people are saying, and you know why this happened is because this is how you know ambition isn't always the best. The guy who said, the the person who decided that they're going to fill in that market to doing regional areas did not realize that there could be a time when prices for things go up. So it was just at break even when he said that <laughs> we're going to launch an airline. There's a gap there. And then uh, the people that were renting the jets increased it by like 2%. He's like, oh, we're bankrupt now. <laughs> That's, kind of That's what fucked. So now there's... Uh, uh, the Br- Richard Branson that never was. Oh, it's sad. But it sucks for regional areas, the people that live in regional areas because yeah. it's, it still remains true that no one catered to them. I mean, you got Rex, Qantas... That is all. What does Cathay Pacific do? I don't know what that it's is. An it's, huh? it's not Cathay. He, it's Cathay. Cathay? <laughs> I don't know. Cathay Pacific. I don't know. Which of all and it's, it's, <laughs> it's also, I'm pretty sure, a Hong Kong airline. <laughs> like, I don't know. Is it? Yeah. No wonder they pronounce it Cathay. I'll tell you what. South China Airlines sucks. You can take that to the bank. Yeah. They won't fly out to they gave me like they? they gave me like two wines onto Taiwan. To Europe. Isn't that enough? No. <laughs> no, it's not. It ain't even what close. Do you mean? They refused they give the you food or they gave me food uh, barely. Like they just weren't very I just want Singapore. I just want Singapore Airlines. Well then maybe you should pay for a ticket. No. <laughs> I, I want to not pay for the ticket and get the same level of service. Is that so much to ask? You're choosing one I, of the worst airlines in the world and you're saying all I want is the best airline <laughs> in the world. Is, is that, that so much? Is to Singapore ask? the best airline in the world? Yeah, it's uh, it used to be almost, for a long time. I yeah. think that really uh, it's up Ar- Arab Emirates. Now it's Qatar and it. shit. Yeah, no, I think know. it's like it's yeah Qatar or Etihad. But like for the longest time, Singapore, Singapore was like right at the top. Yeah, I guess I I'm, honestly think you know what's incredible. As much as I hate Qantas, really good international flight. Yeah, they oh they're really good. Do you th- they just treat all of Australia like shit as the <laughs> official Australian carrier. policy? Uh, thank yeah. you so much for your service. <laughs> I really enjoyed one of the also, 400 flights I've taken. How good I do like the, I do like I do like this aspect about Qantas that you don't have to take a fucking ticket to go to the bathroom. It's just everything is more a relaxed. Ticket? On what are you talking about a ticket? Like, everything is just so overbooked. It's like by the time your turn goes comes to like go to the bathroom, your plane's already landing and they're putting the seatbelt sign on. It's really? it's a mess. 
Well, which what one? The hell are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know what I'm the fuck. I'm talking about you- like Jetstar and shit. Yeah, Jetstar sucks. Jetstar is I sad. Mean, if Qantas was bad. Jetstar Their budget Bonza version. Yeah, Jetstar's really, really. Uh, it's like there's nowhere to put your phone. They they could they pov down on like the little <laughs> fucking carrier thing on the seat in front of you. It's like where am I supposed to put my shit? And, yeah. then, I, and then I actually put my headphones. That, like there's like a little slot that's like emergency. Obviously, the the card that's like tells you what to do for in an emergency. And I put my like AirPods case in there. And the guy was like, I wouldn't do that, sir. And I was like, why? It's like it's very deep. And I literally was just like. It's going to be a miracle if I can fish these out. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Yeah, I can. I believe. <laughs> <sighs> well, okay. So the uh, question is: should should Qantas <laughs> should Qantas <laughs> buy <laughs> should Qantas buy Bonza and just like yeah, they should cut their losses. They should buy Bonza. Why There's not? a lot of people that you know might be working for them. Yeah. Um, with our tax money that they've rorted during COVID. Oh ironically. shit! That'd be incredible. Wait, but that's a private what company. An irony. I think that's the, Qantas is a private company, but they get subsidized too. Yeah, but they're one of those too big to fail companies. Uh, and they take that with absolute merciless rigor. I'm telling you, the worst companies are always ones that are private, but also state run. Yeah. That is always Telstra, SBS, yes. is SBS, Qantas. Yeah. They're all the shittest companies. Jordan's Don't bring camera up is being really weird right now. Oh, that's all right. Just focus the <laughs> Just whole thing on me. <laughs> it's the bar fly. Um, <laughs> Homage to the bar fly. Dead. He's got a new home. <laughs> yep. In respect for the dead, we're going to keep the camera on yeah, the dead thank at you. all times. And I won't talk. I'll just go. Mm. <laughs> well, this is going to be a great. <laughs> it's called art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my uh, official. <laughs> What's your uh, official take on Bonza? To Bonza is. Huh, didn't know it existed. Yes, and mine is, oh, that's kind of romantic, I guess. And also, I don't think anyone in rural Australia can use the word Bonza anymore. Yeah, also, like the name you Bonza. You should have done your market research more and called it Get a Dog Up. Yeah. Get a Dog Up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you name your airline Bonza, I already know it's a Ponzi scheme. Like, mm. who names their company? I mean, we did po- stay at a Bonzi. place. Uh, so, you know what else yeah. probably really didn't help them? No one knew that they existed. <laughs> mm. They should have called it Fair Income Flights, like that hotel we stayed in. Yeah. Or, come on, Crazy Clown Airlines. <laughs> Dude, Ali, we stayed... Bad man's flights. We stayed in this hotel hotel in uh, Port... Mo- no, fuck, where were we? Liz- Lismore. And this lady was talking about how like great all the renovations were and the refurbishments after the floods. I'm like, yeah, go you, good thing. In my ho- and then I went to my hotel and I opened the cupboard door. It was covered in mold, like black mold. Mm. You got a problem with that? Yes, I do. Frankly, was this one of the bad hotels that you're reviewing, or is this just the place? No, you no, this was just why the a oh, hotel. That would have been too mean to review that. Like putting her under for a gag. Yeah, I know. Um, Already under the floods once, and now metaphorically, does she need it? Yeah, and I think you... The answer is clearly yes. <laughs> I think you can understand why there's mold in Oh, Lismore. shit, now I've just yeah, done it on this... No. I've just done it on this... Wait, you can understand. Floods never left. Pro, uh, floods, yes. What are course. you two so pro-mold about? You're like, hey, you should have inhaled the spores. And you're like, what did you expect? No, 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 I think it was because Blade Runner was on Channel 7 and I assumed that that was their doing. Fair. But yeah, yeah, right, right. What was also really sad about being in Lismore cannot get a meal there past 6 30 you literally can't maccas that's the only closed. option closed, closed buddy closed what the maccas closes yeah. mm-hmm. we had to go to the 24 7 place and eat donuts and i had a in a vegetarian korma pasty like pastry that was bad <laughs> that was bad I like miss love it's, it's whole life is just like michelin bella Bradrick, a life of regret Oh, yeah. It's always, always trying. If he goes to Adelaide and sees Moe's Hot Dogs advertised at the petrol station, best believe he's going to be <laughs> that trying. That was you, out. though, who, huh? who you were pushing that agenda. Yeah. Yeah. And you were happy to oblige. It's uh, just we didn't go to that right place. You would have done it, though. I, <sighs> Come on. You are that's Homer the, with the sub that's like six weeks yeah, old. Yeah, I am that. Yeah. You'll do it. I mean, I do do that all the time. I'm just like, expired, 
Challenge accepted. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> All right, let's move <laughs> another segment. Yeah. Uh, this one's going to be very light. The International Criminal Court is about to issue a warrant for Netanyahu and company. What? Yeah, so what? <laughs> first of all, International Criminal Court. So Pakistan can arrest, uh, Palestine can arrest him. No, 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 Palestine can't arrest him. So International Criminal Court is a, <coughs> is a global body that holds people accountable for things like war crimes, but you obviously have to be a signatory to the convention itself. Both Israel and the U.S. aren't signatories to the International Criminal Court, which should tell you a fair bit about what what these countries believe in. But <clears throat> the trouble is that if International Criminal Court issues an arrest warrant for Netanyahu and company, if they ever travel to a con- country that is a signatory of the convention, they can technically be arrested and handed over. And there's about 133 countries that are signatories to this convention and the one that I guess Netanyahu should be most concerned about is the one that's right next to him, Jordan. So if he goes to Jordan, he can be arrested. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking they're figures, arresting, man. They're arresting. Figures. They're issuing these. This is all. This is all like rumors at it's the moment. It's your country, right? You own that country, right? Yeah. Well, of course, I'm going to sign on to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> This is this You're is going to rock the boat. This is all conjecture at the moment because they haven't <laughs> actually issued these warrants. But Netanyahu is freaking out. And he's gone on Wait like a sec, what public the- television a few times saying, you can't do this. This is not right. This is- <laughs> what, what, what countries are the, the sign-ons again? There's 133. Yo. I think we are also one of them. I think. I'm not too sure. But I think we are also one of them. Like most countries are. Yeah, but if you ever went to any country, they're not going to arrest a dignitary. Well, so uh, inter- interestingly, arrest? there's like there was a lot. Immediately, Netanyahu said that this is going to set a bad precedent of uh, liberal democracy fighting barbarians, and if you arrest people for fighting barbarians, then uh, nobody is safe. Mm. He thinks the U.S. said that mm. uh, first they went for Netanyahu, and I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Then they went for Trump, and I still said, said nothing. nothing. Well, let's be honest. We all said a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, we did say a lot about it. <laughs> it's a lot less profound in the 21st century, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's true. And the US has come out say, saying immediately, as because Net, Netanyahu most likely called Joe Biden and said, you can't do this to me. You can't do this to me, man. You can't. And so he said that uh, ICC <laughs> has no jurisdiction over Israel, blah, blah, blah. Just like saying things like to discourage them. Uh, ICC is doing it primarily for two uh, charges. One is that Israel is not allowing humanitarian <laughs> aid to flow into Gaza, which amounts to a war crime through starvation. And the second is Jesus. that the uh, response to October 7th attacks was disproportionate to the, uh, to the need and the attack itself and verged on revenge tactics. So these now, I think that there is an argument to say... Where's the line for that? Now, I'm not saying that Israel didn't cross it in that particular context, but in a war, I'm pretty sure you're always going to cross the line in quote, in quote, proportionate attacks. Man, like, you can. War can lead to that, but it is my view that Israel's policy... Look, so there's two ways of... Oh, de- damn, Netanyahu must have really done a number in Palestine because I don't think they've ir- issued this warrant for Any Putin. Warrant? No, they have. They, uh, he was the last person to uh, receive this okay, warrant they, they after did. the Ukraine war. Right. Which okay. is why apparently Putin... And then why didn't they do it decided the Ukrainian president? ...on hey? not That's going to South Africa. Huh? Uh, there, was a, there was some conference, I think it was for BRICS, that Putin was supposed to attend in South Africa. South Africa is a signatory to this convention. So even though the South African government told Putin that you're, we're not going to arrest you, he still didn't decide to go to South Africa. Because he was sitting there being like, it's a trip. And it was- yeah, of course. Maybe, maybe, for whatever reason. So what? Putin is, this is why there's also like double standard. Every time like Israel or US say something to defend Israel, there's always that double standard versus Ukraine. And this is another example because Putin was issued and America was like, very, very happy about that and had no issues about jurisdictions whatsoever. But when it comes to 
I mean, don't you feel like being Netanyahu or Putin? How old are these guys now? Like in the eighties? Nah, seventies. Yeah. Bro, Netanyahu is gone because there's the, the the amount of protests in Israel right now against Netanyahu is also insane. Because yeah, but isn't that just his entire existence? Yeah, but I think it's gone to that point where, like, literally, as long as the war is happening, he can stay in power. As soon as this war ends, Netanyahu is going to be gone. Yeah, because like from Israel's perspective Israel will not looked at will not be looked at the same way post this war they've lost a lot of social capital i was looking at the us numbers 48% of democrats think that uh uh israel is uh committing a genocide 28% think is uh uh, Israel is not committing a genocide, and the rest don't know. And out what about Republicans, Republicans? Zero percent. No, out of Republicans, <laughs> about 30% are saying that he is committing a genocide. Damn. 47% saying he's not committing a genocide. The rest are, I don't know. And for uh, independents, uh, again, it's like... So if you, if, you, if you combine the numbers of people that think he is supporting that Israel is committing a genocide including with people that are on the fence, it's an overwhelming majority. If you just take the people that are saying that Israel is committing a genocide, that's about one-third of the U.S. population. And if you're Joe Biden, then it's a majority of your base. My and God. this story is similar everywhere in the Western world now. The I'd imagine it would be higher everywhere else in the world. And dude, I was reading a Jerusalem Post article today. It's so... F- I'm funny or whatever. They're freaking out about this, right? Obviously, Jerusalem Post is a right-wing Israeli pro-Netanyahu uh, media organization. And they're obviously like... Like their Telegraph? Yeah, like their Telegraph. They're really freaking out about is this. Is it a thinking person's Telegraph? It's just the Telegraph. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and their Guardian is like Haaretz. I read both of them. But anyway, so Jerusalem... What was the other one called? Haaretz. What the hell is that? Haram. Haaretz. I don't know what it means, but it's like they damn Yiddish... <laughs> It's like their guardian or something. Uh, it's it's a decent one. You kind of know where the both sides of the political spectrum are on if you just read both of them. It was a Jerusalem Post had an amazing article which was about exactly this that this the war has completely changed the perception and they've diagnosed this issue as people like underdogs and uh, <laughs> Israel was always looked favorably upon because as soon as its formation happened, all of these. Uh, uh, Palestine, uh, the Arab countries combined to go against them. So the world looked at Israel as like this underdog in this situation. And as time has gone on, and particularly they claim the Israeli attack on Lebanon in mid-2000s, or 2004 I think it was, has dramatically changed the way now the Palestinians are looked at as underdogs and we are the oppressors. And so they're saying that there's a whole other bunch of hilarious shit which I wouldn't even go into, uh, but they talk about like how this is a, a disease of the mind that has made feminists think that rape is a legitimate form of um, uh, resistance. Referring to Hannah Arik, I think which that feminist. Uh, anyways, there's like a whole bunch of this stuff, but their their rec- their recommendation is that this is how you fix this. You start heavily funding social sciences and arts at universities to the point where like, you essentially buy out most of the faculties. That leaves no room for the social justice types to consume any oxygen. Right now they're saying that we... You can't say it's the Telegraph. Come on. What? This is a thinking man's paper. This is the Herald Sun. <laughs> but this they're like, is they're openly the saying, Adelaide Gazette. They're saying that we need an army of internet people that can quickly identify anyone that is against Israel, label them, this, the writing is in the newspapers, label them as anti-Semitic because they are anti-Semitic. Oh, wow, that's definitely going to work. That's exactly what they do. And not only only make them jobless, but allocate enough resources to pursue them legally and keep them in the courtrooms for the rest of their lives in order to, like, discourage more and more people from doing it. Uh, 
Uh, again, Isn't it amazing? It's the, they one move every time. After careful analysis, we've determined that we should call them anti-Semitic. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they one. How much did no, this initiative I thought they were supposed think to be ge- this genius like techno society? Then they're also saying that if you look at like the ones that that's, are pro-Israel, that's techno music. All of these people that are pro-Israel, they're already on our side. We don't need to worry about them. All the people that are against Israel at the moment, they're going to be really hard to convince. There's about 30 to 40% of people that are in the don't know category. And those people we need to identify. We need to get them involved in Israel. We need to bring them to Israel. 35% Fun- of America's population. Fu- not all of them, but like, you know, you uh, target for, you bring them to Israel, you give them free trips and stuff. You show them the soft image of Israel. And their last point was. But this is all what they do. Yeah, but they're only doing it with Jews now. They're saying that it doesn't no, matter. They don't just do it with if Jews. They do it with dignitaries. They do it with reporters. They do it with dignitaries and other Jews. So their incentive is because they no, want they every. Give it to Scott Morrison. I don't think he's a Jew. Yeah, but he is a dignitary. So dig- Morrison, a witch. But they're talking about like, like <laughs> Misla, for instance. If Miss Love He's is just a random Westerner guy who's kind of, I don't know, somewhere on, in between in Israel and Palestine, they need to identify him, give them heavy incentives, give, allow him, make his life better and force him into the pro-Israel camp. Look at him. He's thinking right now. He's like, oh, right. Free <laughs> trip. And this time not on Air Asia. Hey, give me some of those like, matzo ball soup. Which, which includes like creating. Hey, they like, only gave me two drinks on the flight over. <laughs> Sorry, this is all because of our pre-show that you can upload. Oh yeah, uh, upload. You know, you can just buy it. Online, can you? So do that. You can do that. Yeah. No, this isn't pre-show. This is the main. No, no, no. no. Can you buy you know, the pre-show? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sometimes I upload. Lost in translation purely because I didn't express what I was saying at all. But <laughs> wait, wait, last, last point, last Who'd point. Have thought. Last point. <laughs> they also say that one of the critical mistakes that they've done is to showcase IDF as like the national force in all marketing campaigns for Israel and they're saying you Why need to they do that I don't know because they're Idiot. strong people so they so they they're so saying dumb. like you need to hide all IDF from marketing you need to make civilians wear suits and shit and diplomats mm. and make the face of Israel Mossad yeah <laughs> essentially <laughs> what do you mean essentially who's that again Mossad is their intelligence service oh yeah. so they're saying just keep uniform uh, personnel out of it oh Jesus because they're they going to make it then. Who are they going to make the face of Israel? They're saying make just diplomats. Jerry get Seinfeld. diplomats to <laughs> say shit. Get diplomats I mean, <laughs> to go on different platforms. Don't Jesus get idea Christ. of people doing it. Jerry's. I mean, th- that is the one idea that I've heard so far that I thought, yeah, that's it's kind of different. The other one is never going to happen where they invite Miss Love over. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's Singapore Airlines, I will attend. Have their own airline, sure so they do. Thanks, into Miss. the microphone. <laughs> no, no, keep it going. <laughs> like, You're you know, on. You know, when we were, when we were uh, in Perth, we were thinking about the radio show in Gold Coast on Hot Tomato <laughs> FM. <laughs> yes. And there's just this huge Tongan man next to this equally huge woman. Uh, what I can't remember what they're called. Like, like it's like Kathy and Big Trim <laughs> in the in the Arvos. And every time you go to the Gold Coast. You see their face on every second bus stop, and, and you look at both of them, and you think, uh, do, "Do either of you have your citizenship? <laughs> Probably both backpackers. How does that happen?" You yeah, know, no, it's pretty crazy. Eh? And so they're like huge celebrities of the Gold Coast, but they're called Big Trev. And so we were saying good. that wouldn't it be the greatest show of all time? Because we were talking to uh, our producer about how we used to have a show on in Lithgow Move FM. and one of the most iconic moments of our short stinted career was I put the on air button on I tell him to be silent because we're going out of a song I tell That's him to be quiet I press on air as soon as on air goes he immediately forgets there's a microphone in front of him and goes straight <laughs> <to the> microphone <laughs> That's genius and it, it radio. Was talk of the town. Everybody came in and was just like, I heard that. What the <laughs> fuck was going on? And we're just sitting there laughing for like five minutes and we went off. And we're like, it's the most genius radio segment that's ever been made. And wouldn't it be incredible if they combined the juggernaut that is Big Trev and they just made it Big Burper and Big Trev in the morning. That's how you get your breakfast slot, Trev. And then you've you been go- sitting in the shadows and drive, wasting away with your talents of I assume sitting there being like, hey, do you know do you follow rugby union at all? No, because this is Queensland. Well, it's a fucking good sport too, bro. Like, <laughs> that, that's about it. I, I think, wouldn't it be great to see huge billboards across <laughs> Queensland where it has 
Big Trev eating a big sub. <laughs> and in between the big sub is Miss Love, naked, lying on his side <laughs> like this. And then they make it one of those automated... Uh, I know this is a very expensive campaign <laughs> and probably not in hot tomato scope, but maybe you could be bought out by Hit FM and we could get the real classics out there, yeah? And so he's in the middle of this sub, naked to his side, <laughs> and they make his mouth move up and down yeah. with an audio little footing in the background. They can do this in billboards and have him just go, oh, 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 oh. Big burper and big Trev in the morning. Oh, what? You're leaving in protest, are you, Ali? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's you that can't bad. handle genius. It's that bad an idea, is it, Ali? You can sit there and relay all of bloody Israel today's ideas. But you're not interested in this yeah. country, are you? <laughs> Our issues. Yeah, all right. Mate. Silent. Mm. Absolutely I wanna, silent. I want to see... Standard the, protest. The, uh, I'm just jealous that you didn't think of it, Ali. <sighs> he is. And frankly, I'm, great. I'm embarrassed big for him. Yeah, it's big still, in the it's morning. still doing it for some reason. The, I mean, don't worry about it. It looks okay. Uh, all right, I'm not worrying. About Distracting it. Look, from the issues. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I would watch it. No, watch from, it. A, from a non ego, no ego involved in that statement. I would watch it. It's just, is there anything else that you want to hear from commercial radio at this point? I think it'd be so funny. Him uh, coming in. Hey, it's Big Trevor, Big uh, Burper in the morning. You got anything to say, Big Burper? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every uh, time I burp, it just goes up another percentage in ratings. Yeah, so we get a hundred percent by about. 7.30 a.m. I am a genius. <laughs> um, <laughs> boys, let's do... No, we, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, go it's continue. Too, it's too good a segment. We're going to do my one now. It's too good a segment. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, we have to. It's like a perfect... after that, Jordan, do you want to do a Reddit segment? Am I the asshole? After that, after that. Mm, okay. This is, it's just going to be... These the Reddit segments. Of, so much text. It's going to... Yeah, it's going to be... It's a perfect segue, the one we were just doing. So, guess what... I found. No, he's done what? it. <laughs> the oh, my Israel question. <laughs> found, can you put oh, the camera? Yeah, I'm putting camera on you. Can you? Can it be? Uh, yeah. There it is, sitting in my bookcase since I assume 2005. We're gonna. I think. No, uh, no, no, no. Because uh, if you remember from the blurb, Obama has just been elected. <laughs> What's this? What is this? You didn't look? No. This is a library card. You were supposed to return it to Newtown High. It's a receipt for something. What did you buy? Uh, is this with my money? No, dude. Is this when is you were on the doll? Holy shit. Holly Vitalis. This was from Lithgow. What did I buy? I bought something for 120 bucks a while ago. And that is Miss Love's Israel question. <laughs> <laughs> As um, concludes. I thought it'd be the receipt. What is this going to be? The third Bible? Are we going to read out of this every week? Um, you bought women's clothing. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> um, <laughs> my Israel question. So John uh, Pilger yeah. says, "Who's John Pilger? You'd know. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Again, this is how old this book is. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, John. But Pilcher, when this okay, book was me, written, he was as famous as Chomsky. Is. Okay, so John Pilger said, "I can think of few books about Israel and Palestine written by an Australian as important as Anthony Lowenstein's Brave Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi. It, Jacuzzi. It won shortlisted for New South Wales New South Wales Premier's Literary Awards 2007. So this has been on my books shelf since year twelve. But why is this? Who was in then? Yeah, why is this like a segment? Like, well, I just thought it was funny. Books on, dude. If you come to my house, there's like a section that's just Israel books. Oh, but is yours? From, not, but is yours from 2007? Some of them are from 1877. Yeah, but this has been on my shelf since I got it, and I haven't read it. That's funny. Okay, I haven't read it once. I haven't read any of it since 2007. It's sat on my. How how many years is that? It's been a while. Dude, it's just, it's never been opened. I found it's never moved. This is incredible. What's the go? It's, it's, it's the same point that we're talking about now. Read some of it. Criticizing In Israel the is not anti-Semitic and saying so is vile. But singling out Israel for opprobrium, what the hell does that mean? Opprobrium. Isn't it amazing that we both look to the guy who's English, like, <laughs> second language? Dude, we're Australian. Jesus Christ. We're not educated. An international sanction out of all proportion to any other party in the Middle East is anti-Semitic and saying so is dishonest. 
Well, see, an now unbiased, this whole point doesn't make any sense because I don't know what opprobrium means. An it means look. harsh criticism or uh, censure. Okay, Ali, is it out of date or should I read it? Like, is it, is it worth reading? No, nah, dude, it's the same story. It's just, just it's never out of date. Oh, on okay. top of that, you still haven't finished House of Leaves. Yeah, I can do I can do a review on that if you want. I'm halfway through. It's fucking hell. That's it's a harder read than that. I'll fucking tell you that much. Well, this is a little sneak peek into the quality content that you get if you sign up to the up late. Mm -hmm. You will sometimes hear Miss Love talk about a fictional book that he doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate it. It's just well, I'll wait till the up late. Like there's a there's let's just hold on. Is this stuff to go through? Well, I mean, there's obviously narrative that I can explain, yeah. You don't want to do it keep now. it for the up I can do it now. No, 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 keep it for the uplay. Look, I'm very proud of you, Miss Love, because... <laughs> for finding be a book only, on your shelf. This is the only copy of this book, I'm assuming, ever that was printed that has <laughs> clearly never been opened. <laughs> <laughs> never. Even, even when he found it on his bookshelf, he still didn't crack it open. <laughs> I did it. Not once. I did it. I did it. He's right. And if he sells it, he can <laughs> legitimately say, mint condition, <laughs> never been opened. If I can't now... Um, <laughs> man, this and your autobiography of Tom Cruise. <laughs> what a bookshelf! <laughs> but like, you just have the funniest bookshelf on earth, don't you? <laughs> this, that Harry Potter yeah. book that you put property of Miss Love on the yep. front and then didn't answer. Yeah, yeah and like uh, the, the property of Miss Love one was the funniest because he kept saying like, "I can Don't sell it. Know, I can I'm going to sell that book. That book is worth millions." And it's just like, and it's written in a child's handwriting. I could, well. <laughs> I could just rip that page out. It'd still do all right. I don't know. You think it could sell online for millions of dollars? Not millions, but it'd still do all right. Hundreds of thousands. It's limited. And, and you know what? I also <laughs> checked. Edition. It wasn't even the first edition. It, it was. was one of how can it be first and limited? Yeah, that's how it works. It is. <laughs> First is limited. Oh, me. So, like, should I... I was going to bring it here and be like, hey, what a gag, I'll leave it here. But, like, should I actually read it? No. We, 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 he just Absolutely. said I could... He just I said, will read the back of this. Okay. You Let's all at home decide whether the Israel question in 2024, after the main guy <laughs> saying it has been dead for, like, I think a year or two now. Uh, which, rest his soul, he was a great guy. Right. But the undeclared war in the Middle East is the abiding conflict of our era with little apparent hope of resolution despite years of peace talks. Well, that still holds true. The futile oh, 2006 really Lebanon war merely heightened this sense of hopelessness. Didn't make any ground at all. On one side of the conflict, Israel asserts the right of the Jewish state to exist in Palestine. On the other, Palestinian people struggle for survival. Far beyond Israel's disputed borders, the conflict is replayed around the world in passionate public discussion. Written by an Australian Jew. I don't know why that's in italic. They just wrote written by an Australian Jew. I don't know. It was it was more controversial. What an anti-Semitic. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, that's why he wrote in italic, so you don't call him anti-Semitic. He's not calling him, he's not saying like Jew. He's just saying, that's what I think the name is. I'm going to put it in inverted commas because that's what I read. Right. My Israel Question was published in 2006 amidst a storm of controversy, critical praise, and robust debate. The Israel-Palestine conflict has rarely been discussed as, frankly, uh, an indication that decades-old silencing of dissenting views was coming to an end. Lowenstein's searching discussion continues here in this fully updated and expanded new edition. <laughs> He's a significant voice in one of the most important debates of our time. Uh, you, you know what? From the blurb. Pretty good. I'm telling you, Maybe it's, it's going to be yeah, okay, I'll read it's it. gonna be all relevant because things haven't changed. Especially True. when half the book is Pictures? just notes uh, at the end. Is it? Yeah. That's, uh, right, no, I get, think there's like 10 pages in here. Okay, get to cool. more pressing I'll, things. I'm Am pretty, I the asshole on Reddit? I'm, uh, no, chuck me the book. Is it locked? I want to see. <sighs> it is locked. Let's see if my fingerprint <laughs> matches. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn, maybe this is the best book ever written. Yeah. All right, let's have a look. -see. Am I the asshole for refusing to give up my extra seat for someone else's toddler on a flight that I paid for because I was attacked? Oh, yes, you are an asshole. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah. But how can he give it up? He's fat. He has a lot of notes. Um, well, read, read the thing. Read yeah, the thing. True. I'm a 34-year-old female and I'm obese. 
I'm actively working towards losing weight. No one cares. No one cares. Just I say care. That. I care. I'm going over to see my brother and his husband for Christmas across the country because I'm fat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why only fat people care about their brother. I booked an <laughs> extra seat. <laughs> 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 because I'm fat. Yeah, of course. Well, I was worried there for a second. Yeah. Who would visit their sibling? Why would you visit it's just bizarre. Only you would be tr- only wanting to visit him to have sex with him. <laughs> <laughs> because that's also what fat people do in chess. I mean, they should just really look. Honestly, pre like we knew this, and, and clearly the only reason why you're trying to lose weight is so that he can easily find your vagina. Oh <laughs> no! I know it sucks having to pay for an extra seat, but it is what it is. <laughs> Tim, I know Southwest Airlines. <laughs> Fuck, dude! I don't think anyone in Australian history. I think we're like the second fattest country on earth. I've never seen that on a flight. Neither. But I bet you when you're in America, it's just like we're at full capacity, <laughs> which is of course fifty percent capacity. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> we have fifty percent of the people in plane, but uh, the weight limit is two hundred percent at the moment. <laughs> Shit! Welcome to Banja Airlines. Yeah, if anybody, if anybody would like to wait for the next flight, they'll get a free candy cane for courtesy of America Airlines, and then half of them like. <laughs> Anyways, Bonza, enjoy, Bonza. enjoy your stay in Connecticut, uh, <laughs> home of the maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been told that Krispy Kreme is out of donuts. Everything, uh, everything goes smoothly from checking into security and boarding, at least at first. This woman comes on my row with a boy who appeared to be about a year old. She told Mike, me, Mike, Mike. she told me to squeeze into one seat so her son could sit in the other. She told me not asked. Yeah, from your rendition, this is the whole thing about Emma the asshole. It's always a bunch of people that clearly know they're the asshole, and they're just looking for reassurance from the most sympathetic people on earth. Redditors. No, I don't know, man. She paid for both seats. She clearly deserves it. Go on. She deserves. I mean, it. yeah, maybe she. Dude, she's yeah. paid twice the fare. Give her a seat. Oh my god! Isn't this such a developed world issue? She makes a big fuss over it, which got the flight attendant's attention. She told the flight attendant I was stealing the seat from her son. I showed my boarding pass, proving that I, in fact, paid for the extra seat. The flight attendant asked me if I could try to squeeze in, and I said no. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I paid for this seat. Yeah. The boy who the mum said is 18 months old is supposed to sit in her lap, and he could just do that. The flight attendant eventually told the mum to put her son on her lap. I got dirty looks <laughs> and passive-aggressive remarks from her the entire flight. And I do feel a little bad because the boy looked hard to control so by the arsehole. Look, I'll say this. You're not an arsehole, but you are a fat cunt. That is undeniable. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I take it back. I, I misheard what you were saying. I thought it was what? like, I'm really fat and I only paid for one sheet and there's a total next to me and I said, fuck off. That's what I heard. But what do you think is a... I just think it's pathetic that you have to get two seats and when someone says I've got a small child it's, here you're yeah. like I'm not even going to try to squeeze yeah in. because like mm. she she paid two seats because two she, she, she can't sit she next was, to two adults she was being considerate she was being considerate because she bought two seats squeezing into one would not have been good for the people either side and also a toddler you can just put on your knee well, you're very empathetic to the Obese class of the world, aren't you? I didn't know that. Yeah, but like, uh, how much space is a. Love like, the fatties. Yeah, you know. How much space is an yeah, 18 yeah. month old going to occupy? I'm sure she can spill over a little bit on that seat. Just on yeah. the knee. Or the 18 year old could have shat on her lap. <laughs> or the, the fat that was pulling over and would have had a nice True. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do you reckon? She's not the arsehole. No, Who's the asshole not. then? The kid for existing. The kid, the kid. Nah, the mum. The, the kid, the kid. The, mom. the flight the attendant. Mom, the the mom. flight the attendant. The mum's an asshole. Yeah. Why, why is the flight attendant? You can't say the flight why, attendant. Why? The, the flight at- of asking. Come no, on. So for saying like, can you adjust? Like, what is your job to solve this shit? I suppose. Well, she's trying just to tell solve me it. what I already know. Can you just adjust yeah, but me? She also is in this unbelievable paradox of the customer is always right. Yeah. There's two customers. That's true. Yeah, but she paid for two tickets so she has two person's voices mm. so she counts for two so she counts for two whereas the one passenger she didn't even pay for a kid so she counts half she's taking two people on one ticket whereas the fat lady is taking one person exactly on so it's the mom tickets. it's the mom so the fat lady needs to be listened to by the flight attendant i agree wow <laughs> i did not realize how uh passionate both of you were <laughs> 
uh, on about the of rights of fatties. I mean, I if you realize it, no, you the, guys are really serious no, about I'm, it too. I'm, sitting there saying, no, 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 I, I believe it. I'm passionate about the you know the consumer. Like, if you pay for something, then you've got that right. You know, if you pay for two seats, they're your seats. Have you guys heard of like <laughs> some airlines are considering? I'm serious. Have you heard of this? Some airlines are considering charging people based on their weight. Oh my so god! So your airfare would be based Dude, on. Dude, how, how quickly are we are. tumbling towards Soylent Green? Like, what the fuck is that? What do you mean? It's just so dystopic. It's like 30 kilos, you can go into the Mars colony. 40 kilos, take him to the soil and green factory. <laughs> you can't take the common man will rise up against this authoritarian state one day. It's like, shut up, fatty. <laughs> it's just fucked. It's so fucked. You don't you don't think it's a, you don't think it's fair? I think it's insane. Well, like, that means the people that don't wear a lot <laughs> will pay less for flights. I know, but I, I, I what if people, some people are fat because they can't help it? <laughs> I know, but they can't help paying extra. It's can, anyone, is anyone, can anyone seriously not help being so fat? I don't, I, look, as yeah, a, some that, people. I don't think that's I'm going to be, I'm gonna be 100% honest about this. I don't Africa buy this. suffering from starvation that needs two yes. seats. Have you seen little babies that are starving? They get big bellies. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not air. two seats level. That's, <laughs> no, that's no, no, still no, no. like considered yeah. one easily made. No, dude, they don't even get seats on like trains. Huh? Have yeah. you, did you see this? Uh, there's this um, a YouTuber. He goes, he's kind of like bold and bankrupt, but his name's something else. He's South African. He's in Bangladesh. Hairy and moderately well off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest and the most fucked thing you'll ever see. He's in Bangladesh. He's on a local train, but he's like literally outside of the train at the front. Right, so, so the train is like going at 130 <laughs> k's behind him and he's right at the front and you can just see the track and then there's like a little baby that's next to him oh traveling by God. himself. What? Really? And he's like three years old. Shit. And he's like right at the front. Oh my God, this is the most effed up thing you'll ever see in your entire life. That's how they travel. Did they do that in Pakistan? I hope not. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. That'd be fun. Wait, what's your point? Oh, that's just <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just, my yeah, point what is that she's got to do with fat <laughs> No, he's just the train. Yeah, the look. Train, I'm just saying, like, people have it look tough. Yeah, they have it tough. They have it tough. But, like, you can't weigh people. It's just too much. It's like, these flights are getting so ridiculous. Have you seen photos of the in-flight shots of people flying in the 60s? Mm. They had full... First of all, the fucking seats are the size of these two cushions. They're huge. Mm. Um, and they're getting like, it's like, would you like carved lamb or carved ham, ma'am? She's like, I believe I'll have both. It's like, of course, more hot gravy. They had like, they had like yeah, full but they were roast also dinners. not buying like heavily discounted Webjet tickets. Like that was a time when all airplane was business class. Like you had to be from business class to travel Bullshit. by you're, So you're yeah, saying. Yeah, no, no, that, that, it's true, miss. It was really expensive to fly. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that shut me up. <laughs> Damn it. It's so good. Why can't I get that for $69 to Japan? And Singapore <laughs> Airlines too. And when Singapore Airlines carved roasts, they not Singapore Airlines. You fly all these business, like most of the place, most of the companies that you've flown on, I can guarantee you are out of business now. What are you talking about? You always fly the cheapest, worst. Yeah, China Airlines. Some guy that needs to <laughs> rotor it up at the beginning. Gonna... <laughs> you know, probably get that fat woman to like just put it in her belly and then just shoot it in the general direction. So you fly on that and then you sit there and you're like, I want roast ham. Like you're not even getting, you're not even flying, you're just getting catapulted to fucking do it. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. So, yeah, I don't know. You just, look, look. <sighs> fair. You're fair. what's wrong with this country. <laughs> <laughs> it goes through life. You're right. You're right. It's true. Okay. We've got, hey, you fuck want you. cheap tickets or do you want roast ham? That's what I'm saying. <sighs> Standard of living. Uh, what are the bullshit? What are the tropes? Standard of living. Miss, if wage you wanna, is not rising. Shuck on them Miss, apples. This is going to trigger you further. Apparently oh, in, uh, what's that European airline? I think it's called Ryanair. They their suck. CEO, they suck. Their CEO said 
This is my new plan. <laughs> we're going to get rid of the back bathrooms <laughs> and we're going to keep standing people. <laughs> like, so you oh my God. Dude, <laughs> it'll be like a buzz. I, I'm going to start having a panic attack here. And he said that it'll And you're going to use that <laughs> flight for real. <laughs> it'll be half dollars off. Wow. I'm sure we'll definitely notice that $15 in my bank account. <laughs> it is designed specifically it's for people so like annoying. you sitting there just being <laughs> can't even bloody go on a plane anymore and be offered jewellery. <laughs> what the fuck? Why am I standing up? This is bullshit. <laughs> Can't believe it. You can't know, believe that I'm flying in the sky. You're not that great. Very efficient. Fuck you. You're not, so, you're not some like, you're not the prince of Persia either. What do you mean? I'm just saying, fuck you. You suck too. How? Just generally. You suck for many reasons. I can't be bothered to list them. <laughs> but am I for flying or just in general I suck? I don't know. Bit of both. Bit of both. <laughs> I don't think I've ever complained about anything on a plane except goddamn kids. Yeah, the babies. So, much ass. Yeah, you so now I'm on side with the fat woman for just making that kid's life a misery. <laughs> no, he's right. What he said's true. I would be that person. I'm like, I want ham. Mm. All right, I've got Whatever. two, two options. It would be me. It would be me. <laughs> you guys uh, still get ham. <laughs> you guys have to Fucking vote bullshit. on the, You guys have to vote on the next segment. Either the segment can be about Jerry Seinfeld saying... PC police is going too crazy. Yeah. Or he's right, you know. Or you can uh we can talk about the first ever supercomputer computer simulating uh the end of Earth. Whoa. I want that. We gotta do that. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry's well, that's a big ticket. But and then I we go into it in the computer simulation <laughs> sheds that political correctness went too far. <laughs> <laughs> As prophesied by A1 Jerry Scheinfeld. Okay. Funny are regarding Jerry as the new Messiah and calling him the Moy Adib on the streets of Brooklyn. <laughs> I think we're going to have to still do Jerry after this too. Day, but all because pre- uh, Netanyahu was arrested for this extreme downward of political correctness. Um, okay. A study <laughs> saw. This guy's all right. You, you know, I, I scratched what I said about him being a dick. He's all right. This guy's all right. This guy's all right. <laughs> because he buys, you know, middle class airplane seats. I <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm a cunt. What do you mean middle class? <laughs> no, because I, because I, like you know, I, I, I th- this is why I'm a cunt because I don't expect that you should be able to smoke on a plane and have a chair literally as large <laughs> as this car. Yes, that's why you're a cunt. Yes. <laughs> For under a hundred bucks. Yes, yes, that's why you're a cunt. Yes. They pulled the wool over your eyes, these companies. They're making profits through the roof while I was sitting there like sardines and you're happy to take it. You're part of the problem. <laughs> I am part of the problem. You, you are. are absolutely. Where right. do you think the money's no, going? Actually, you know what? You now that I think about it, I complain about quantities all the time. You think the CEOs could knock a bit off for some legroom? What? Knock a bit off of their fucking yearly huge <laughs> for wages. <Ms>. Love. <laughs> for everyone. It's called the mislove cut. No, it's called the Every fun- CEO has <sighs> to take it. He's got a such cut. tall man problems sitting there like with his eight feet tall legs bundling in there. You, you need an extra seat. That's why. So you can just lie on this side. Listen, listen, you fool. Miss, you just need to pay like extra $7 and listen, get like the emergency exits. Listen, you Yeah, fools. or volunteer to help in the case of an unlikely emergency. Do you like Jetstar? They're owned by Qantas, right? Hate them. Yeah. Do you think Qantas' fucking CEOs are, are not making a lot of money? Is that your fucking, is that your thing to die on in life? To be like, oh no, they deserve more. I think that they have a very stressful job and are adequately compensated for their uh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> for their rorting of the Australian taxpayer. Yeah, you've got your uh, what do they call those people in unions that like scab? You got your scab right here. Scab. Yeah. Why? Because I no, no, I don't demand on. extra leg room. <laughs> no, because you don't mind the CEOs making that cash while all of us suffer. Oh, I do mind that. I I mind the extra profits. I think this is the whole thing. I think. That deep down, I have severe low self-esteem and think I don't deserve any more. Yeah, that's the problem. That, that's what I think this it is. this weird thing where you want to be like whipped and shit. Like, Not man. whipped. Just treated like cattle. I think it just kind of humbles people in the modern age. I think <laughs> I, I just think of people demanding constantly... This is everyone's mindset I, I can glean from this day kid? and age. It's like, no, it's not humiliation. It's, it's I hate that most people seem to have this understanding of the world now that, oh, I've seen billionaire lifestyles on Instagram. 
why don't I have that billionaire that's, lifestyle? That's not... It's the fat cat's fault. Yes, yes. That, Leg room is billionaire lifestyle, yes. Okay, you we just went s- from like a, a having your own inbuilt fireplace I never said on that. a plane. I never said that. Okay, well, it was very close. Oh, you want fuck to, off. Cutting what is a two sofa? roasts <laughs> it- offered to you like it's a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the roast. I don't want the roast. Do you know what I'm happy with? Canapes. Fucking. Canapes. No, how about this? Just. I'm going to how, about just a, how about just a shit meal? That's good. What shit meal? A shit meal. I'm happy. I'd be happy with a shit meal. You get shit meal. No, you don't. When you flew to Europe, they didn't offer you I'm anything. Talking they just gave you two I'm talking about domestic. I'm talking about domestic. Why do you want to do one? It's pretty close to the road. I'm talking about domestic. <laughs> why do you want a meal from Sydney to Melbourne? Because I get hungry. Five minutes. Yeah, well, that's true. That that's not it. Perth, six hours. Fuck it. If you didn't arrive at the uh, airport, <laughs> like at, when you when you should have arrived like half an hour before, we could have gone to Virgin Lounge and you could have gotten any meal you like. I beat you these days once. No, you beat not me true. once. Not true. Not true. Twice. Yeah, probably twice. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but you've... come on, Miss. Like, really? No, you... the, the Virgin Lounge is a mate. Well, look. Let me to be honest here. The food at the Virgin Lounge, the lounge ain't carved fucking lamb. It ain't carved lamb. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. They could make those cupcakes a bit bigger. The coffees are good. It's the CEO's fault. He's getting it paid is. Too it much. is the CEO's fault. He's cutting it on the fucking the po- chefs. The potatoes aren't worn because of the CEO. Yeah, it is. Hey, look, you guys, let's find out how the world ends. Two bootlickers over here. Man, Miss Love fighting the common man's plight. You know what? You guys keep arguing because I'm gonna warm up. <laughs> I'll warm up. <laughs> I think we I think we were done with you. I'll read the fucking end of the world shit. Give it to you. Um, okay, you read it while I prep the next one. So for those of you that weren't part of the pre-show, a few pods ago, the boys were making fun of me because I said Nihari, which is a famous Pakistani uh, dish. dish, was ranked the number one national dish in, in the, the world. world. And uh, I showed them a video of some guy who did the video and he ranked... Uh, Pakistan as the number one national dish. Hmm. These they made fun of me, so I made it, and they're gonna try it live and tell me if it is in fact the number one national dish in the world or not. <laughs> so you guys, if you want to read the super computer, yeah, thing, can I read it? Go that while I prep the food. All right, fuckers. All right, here we go. The team from the University of Bristol found that the world would look vastly different. The, that the world would look vastly different to how it is now. Due to tectonic, tectonic plates, continents would move all over the place and create a new supercontinent called Pangaea Ultima. Fuck. Dr. Alexander Farnsworth said, the, sounds fake, the newly emerged supercontinent. Dr. Alexander Farnsworth does sound like a <laughs> fake name, doesn't it? It really does. Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> <laughs> I have a PhD in smartology. In intelligentsia. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> smartology. The newly, uh, the newly emerged... Uh, what does that entail? Oh, 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 many numbers, I can assure you. Uh, the newly emerged supercontinent. With, what the fuck? Is this, I thought you said it was a supercomputer that predicted it. Yeah. Supercontinent is predicted by a supercomputer. Alexander Farnsworth doesn't sound like a computer, but all right. Jordan, read the article. The newly okay, emerged. Come on. No, no, fuck off. The newly emerged supercontinent would effectively create a triple whammy comprising the con- continental- continentality effect. Hotter sun and more CO2 in the atmosphere of increasing heat for much of the planet. The result is a mostly hostile environment devoid of food and water sources and uh, sources for mammals. Widespread temperatures of between 40 to 50 degrees Celsius and even greater daily extremes compounded by high levels of humidity that would ultimately seal our fate. Humans along... So I think we're going to survive until then. I'm pretty happy about that we'll because how long different. way is this? I assume it's let's at least 50 years. Let's, let's see. <laughs> Humans, along with many other species, would expire. Sorry. Uh. Due to their inability to shed this heat. This heat through sweat cooling their bodies. Only 8 to 16% of the land would be habitable for mammals and when the supercontinent forms and humans would seriously struggle to adapt to the new climate extremes. Volcanoes would erupt more regularly and would... Sorry, and we'd also be battling a brighter sun that would be dishing out some serious rays our way. But you need not fear, as this doomsday scenario isn't forecast to happen for another 
250 million years. We are not going to live that long. What a stupid computer. The people, Go back to Jerry Simon. The people behind the research... The, real issues. the people behind the research <laughs> believe this should still act as a warning sign for humans to address How? climate change. Study, We're not going to live that long. Study co-author Dr. Eunice Lowe said it is a vitally important not to lose sight of our current climate crisis, which is a result of human emissions of greenhouse gases. While we are predicting an un- uninhabitable planet in 250 million years... Today, we are already experiencing uh, extreme heat that is detrimental to human health. This is why it is crucial to reach net zero emissions as soon as possible. Why do they care? What, what do you mean, why do they care? Well, we're all just going to die anyway. Mr. Smarty Pants, Yeah, but that <laughs> is your real name. <laughs> yeah, but 250 million years. Fuck, but what a useless waste of it. Thanks for wasting our time, world smartest man. Um, 250 million years is a pretty good run, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Like that's 250,000 years is a good run yeah, comparatively to most. So basically... I mean, you know what? Actually, snakes have done it. They've been around for 210 million. That's amazing. I think... Actually, they've got another 40 million <laughs> years to go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start panicking yet. I just... Can you imagine if it's like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer just like stops in traffic because like, I'm halfway through my life. It's like, that's me from this on now. I'm like, I've only got 250 million years. <laughs> Fuck. Ali, it's fine. Could you imagine? We're not. We're good. Two hundred fifty million Could years. Could you imagine being alive for two hundred and fifty million? Wouldn't you, you get sick of it, dude? I reckon probably after hundred thousand. I reckon peak life would be like one hundred and fifty years, and they'd be pushing it. Yeah. What do you think? What about if you were at your level peak? Now? Oh, now, oh, now, like. I'd nah, be, even then, I'd probably push. It. I'd probably a couple of hundred. I'd welcome death. A couple of hundred. I mean, to be honest, like. I went rock climbing last night and like did a gym session today. So I'm like, one year is too much right now. But it's all about like how you're feeling in the moment. There is those Greenland sharks, for instance, is a very hipster point, but <laughs> so you will be interested. I don't in think it is. But, That's a very nerdy point. But think about this. Think about this. Greenland sharks. I don't know about those sharks. No, no they're terrible. It's a vice thing. They were like, uh, do you think you can get high after your food? <laughs> Pretty much caused an extinction of a species of hips is going, oh, you get high. <laughs> but anyway, some of them have lived longer than America has been a country. Whoa. How many years is that, by the way? No idea. A couple of hundred. But the point is that they can live 500 years. Fuck. That is amazing. A shark. Is it a deep water shark? Like deep, I deep. I assume as much. It was really gross I feel, and old. Yeah, because I feel like those, those, those animals and organisms that are in the deep... I think they live way longer because of the pressure or something. It's okay. Like, I think. I do not want that shark's life. I know, just squashed forever. Yeah. I and kinda... constantly dark, yeah. endlessly scared that something was about to swim up and eat you. Yeah. It'd be uh, what's it well, called? Well, I suppose you're a shark, so no. Yeah. But it'd be, it'd be uh, what's it called again? The book One Tree Hill. <laughs> the house, what? the book I'm reading. The House of Leaves. It'd be, it'd be like House of Leaves, you know, <laughs> darkness forever. And if you want to know what that is, you are going to have to sign up to the up late. Otherwise, yeah. you'll never know this thing that you yeah. can easily Google now. <laughs> um, and probably know the end of it. Instead yeah, of but this piecemeal rendition of a guy that sits there and, and seriously hates the book. I don't hate it. I just complain to you when I'm reading it because it's like, it's a dense, difficult book. It really is. All right. Yeah. So after this, we'll give you something light. War and Peace. I'd probably read it. Would you? I bet it's can't be. It, okay. It can't War be and, harder than Harry like, Potter. Won't. <laughs> War and Peace. Is it really that hard to War read? War and Peace yeah. is really that hard. Is, I'm asking you. I've got no idea because I've never read it. I've, I don't read any fiction. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I would imagine because it's everybody's go-to reference of a difficult book that is probably yeah. difficult. It's just thick. thick. It's thick. thick. Really. War and Peace. It's just the Israel book. It's just like, <laughs> now we're going to talk about War and Peace and the thing of Israel and Palestine. I wonder like, ooh, it smells good, Ali. I wonder like, who wrote War and Peace? Jerry Sheinfeld. <laughs> Tolstoy, the Russian? Yeah, he's good. How I've, do you know? I've read some of his short stories. His short stories are several thousand pages long. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. But like, he's like- well, a, What's the short story you read? The one about the lawyer- that I wonder if my whole life sure is wrong. That one. You read that? 
Might have been Wikipedia. <laughs> Same shit. Okay. Uh, give me the Wikipedia entry of it. Okay, I've told you this before. Have you? Yeah, I've already told you this. But okay. um, he was a lawyer mm -hmm. and he made good money. Mm -hmm. And his wife was like, he, you know, he had an upstanding position in the uh, society and his wife was like, you should do it. And he was like, but he always wanted to be a, I think it was a musician or something. And he always wanted to, but he, every time his wife was just like, yeah, you, you're making good money. Like you've got the respect. Like, do you really like, do you really like, you want to give that up? And he was like, ah, oh, shit, maybe you're right. Maybe I won't. Maybe it's not worth it. And then one day he was dying and he was on the last thing he said to his wife was like, I wonder like maybe my whole life was wrong. Mm. And then he died. And it's a great... I don't think that you've even read the Wikipedia entry. <laughs> I think that you just heard Wayne Dice. So no, I did read it. Okay. Is All that right, incorrect? Huh? Are you saying that's incorrect? No, I'm saying that that is exactly what I know from that story of Wayne Dice. I summary. swear to God. I, because I, I think I heard it from Wayne Dice and I'm like, let me get to the bottom of this. And then I just read Because I thought it was such a... It was like, oh, well, he did a very good summary. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Right. I, just, I, I just thought it was a really poignant profound stories it's just like dude so do I. money comes and goes like on your fucking deathbed it's all bullshit did you actually do what you wanted to do it what your passion was because if you didn't it's like you would be like i've wasted my life my I, life I is a fucking waste yes i will go further than saying uh not what you wanted to do did you do what your dharma wanted you to do? sure that's another that's another but I would, I, I, I like to imagine they're both the same thing, you know? They're, they're fairly close. Pretty much. I think that one of them is succumbing to daily whims of uh, YouTube, uh, Pornhub. Yes. That's no good. Doing what you want. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, comments. fuck that. That's not, yes, you could say that, but like no one's passion is porn or YouTube, you know? Mm, I don't know. I talk to people on Reddit. <laughs> Well, fair enough, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, they're living out there. <laughs> I mean, some people look. Manuel Ferreira is definitely living his dumbest. Like, just went to fix. Just come, baby, come, yes, baby, yes. Imagine if he is on his deathbed and come, he goes, sir. "What if my whole life?" <laughs> what did and you want? I wanted to come a couple more times. Yeah, yeah, I wanted. I, I, yeah, I wanted to fix a few more times. What about you, I've Chiku? Had sex with fifty women at once, but what fifty one? <laughs> How many people? What did you say? I've had sex with fifty women at once, but uh. <laughs> hey, look, yeah. I'm going to show them the thing first. Yeah, yeah, get in there, all geographic style. Where's the freaking forks, lad? Uh, I'll get a spoon. Yeah, that doesn't happen in Pakistan. But you're supposed to have it with bread. Can you get some spoons too, please? But um, is this the final countdown? Is it? Is this a I guess so, yeah. This is pretty cool. Hey, look at us. 7M and 7T? What are you talking about? High school. Yeah. Is that what it was? 7T? 7D. Oh, right. And you, this is food tech, is it? Yeah, I'm just being like, these are the down of my happy days. <laughs> All right, now let's see if this hey, is you, uh, the this greatest. Is sprinkle a little bit of lemon, lemon. on it. Yeah. yeah. What's, is that, um, what is that, like? You're not talking into a microphone, but I will describe it's what's like, happening. Yeah, uh, Miss Love is sprinkling lime onto well, what really looks like pat Call it, what is it, Nahari? Nahari, Nahari. Oh, that's the name it. of it. Yeah, you're doing it right, yeah. So do we just grab some? And that's yeah, it. grab some meat, dip it in some stuff. And then... All right. See, we really don't need the spoon. Yeah, you're right. All you do is dip it in the tubler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's have a little gander, shall we? Well, we're supposed to have it together. At the same time. Having it same no, oh, it's tender. Is it the shit. is it the greatest meal of all time? Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, you you do that play. You really shouldn't mess up this brand new studio. Mm. It was no, it was um ginger. Limey. Mm. What the hell? Pleasant flavors. Mm. Mild spice. Ali, I think this is just that you're a good cook. I feel like I'm on a master is it chef. Number one or not? Wait, wait. Is it number one wait. in the world? Wait, I feel like no, I'm, there's like a lot of meals out there. Hungry I feel Jacks, like I'm, Wendy's. I feel like I'm on master chef right Nose. now. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a uh, 
No crunch it's of It's really good, man, but I honestly I cannot tell yeah. the difference between it and anything else you've ever made. I got <laughs> that's, <laughs> not, that's so bad. No offense. I have a controversial opinion. But you just make really good Pakistani food. I have, I have a controversial opinion. Mm. Is it number one or not? Yeah. Uh, I think it's number one. Number one it, in the world. It's this is so the best meal you've ever had. No, no, it's the number one national dish in the world. No other it's national dish. It's fucking comes good. From. It's really it's good. It's really good. But Thank I just think, like, yes, it's number one. I think it's number one. Fuck Ali, this is why I wanted to get the Patex version of it, though. I didn't want to get yours. What is better than this? What? I think it's just a good cook. But honestly, does this taste any different to anything Ali's ever made? It does. It's spicier, and he doesn't usually use ginger. And it's uh, it, it's similar. It's a fucking curry, but it's like it's the. It's the superior curry. It might be the best curry I've ever tried. <laughs> well, that settles it. If you want to have some, then uh, sign Make up to the chef. Uplate. Is it lamb? I will it, give a full recipe. Is it lamb? Yeah. That, no, this is beef. Okay. It's beef shank. The well, meat. Yeah, but you've got to slow cook it so it becomes oh, really tender. Right. How good is it? It's great. What do you say? You, you don't think it's the best in the world? No, I don't think it's the best <laughs> meal in the world. Yeah, it's really good. I think it is. We're going to censor But honestly, I, I, you know I, you know me. I think it's Red Rooster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll eat. Yes. Best in the world. All right, that's it. So if you want the recipe, sign up to the Patreon and mm. access the uplates. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Thanks Bye for everyone. joining us. Just my penis as you go out. Mm.